الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in سورة الحجر chapter 15 in verses 49 and 50 بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نبئ عبادي أني أنا الغفور الرحيم وأن عذابي هو العذاب الأليم O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم inform my servants that it is I who am the forgiving, the merciful, and that it is my punishment which is the painful punishment. So in the first verse, Allah Taala gives us two of his beautiful names, Al-Ghafoor and Al-Rahim. Al-Ghafoor, he cures the soul from whatever ails it. When you go to Allah with you know, asking for forgiveness and you mend your ways, Allah cures you from many of the, the, the diseases of the soul. Hate, envy, arrogance, selfishness, and many other you know, diseases, they're all symptoms of the same disease. It's, it's being far away from Allah. The farther away from Allah you are, the worst human being you are. The closer you are to Allah, the better your, your manners and the better human being you are. So when Allah when you return to Allah Taala, the forgiving, He cures you. Hayd al Ghafur, and al Rahim, the merciful, casts on the soul from His light. He 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 gives you the divine light so you can see your path forward. So you you are happy. You don't make mistakes. You don't get into trouble. You achieve safe safety you know safety and happiness. In, you know, in this life. The pessimistic ones, you know, the ones who see the worst case in, every, in everything, they truly do not know Allah. Because if you know Allah, you never lose hope. When you understand that Allah is al Ghafur Rahim, you will never lose hope in Allah's help, in his, Allah's protection. The ones who know Allah never lose hope. And when you seek nearness to Allah, when you go, when you come closer to Allah with good deeds, with with you know everything that He likes, He will impart from His light, from His from His attributes, He imparts on you. So you you know mercy, forbearance, kindness, generosity, and many other perfect characters. That's how you get it. You get it by being closer to Allah. Just like if you are in a company of people, if you are in a company of rotten people, you're going to be a rotten person. Or at least you're not going to improve. But if you're in the company of good people, they will impart on you from their good manners and elevate you. So how about if you get closer to Allah? Ta'ala? So if the good manners in, in the personality are lacking, then there's a problem in the approach. You're not, you're not in coming closer to Allah correctly. So you need to go back and revisit, revisit what you're doing. Nearness to Allah is done with obedience, with steadfastness, and with good deeds. You need all of these. So when you do that, Allah purifies your souls. al Ghafur takes care of your sins, removes them, purifies your soul. You become a better person, and He fills you with happiness. That's what, what the verse is telling you. And if you think about happiness, every person, every human being, since Allah created Adam till the end of, end of time, they all seek happiness and safety. No matter what their faith is, no matter what their color is, what their race is, those are primary things that every person seeks. They want to be happy. They want to be safe. The problem is in how you achieve, how you pursue that, to, to make it happen. Happiness cannot be achieved with wishing, with hoping, or worse yet, with disobedience and disbelief. Going, you know, seeking money to make you happy, you're not going to be happy. Happiness is not in money. That's called pleasure. Pleasure is momentary, and once that, you know, is gone, is gone. Happiness comes from the inside, and it only comes from nearness to Allah. When you are 
near to Allah, He gives you that light, He gives you that happiness. It comes from the inside. You're in heaven on earth, even if you are in solitary confinement in a prison. That's how happiness works. So you do not seek happiness through other, you know, other means. Happiness is sought with closeness to Allah. Ta'ala. And happiness is in proportion to your nearness to Allah. The closer you are to Allah with obedience and with good deeds, then the happier you are. The farther you are, the less happy you are. And nearness to Allah is in proportion to how steadfast you are on Allah's orders and how many good deeds you do. The more steadfastness, the more good deeds you do, the closer you get to Allah. And steadfastness and good deeds are in proportion to your knowledge, to your knowledge of Allah and what He wants from you and what you're supposed to do in, in this life. So this is the formula for happiness. You gain knowledge, the, the, the good knowledge that's going to benefit you in this life and in the hereafter, the knowledge of Allah, the knowledge of His words, the knowledge of what He wants from you. You can seek other knowledges for a profession, that's fine. But you need to know who Allah is. What does He want from you? What are you supposed to do in this life? You gain this knowledge, and then you implement it. You put it in, into action, and you get closer to Allah, and you achieve happiness. That's the path. There is no other path. This is the only path to be happy. Pleasure will not give you happiness. It's, it's a momentary thing. And it's an external. You need something external to keep feeding it to get that. So the happiest human being in existence is our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Why? Because he was the closest to Allah. He implement, He behaved as the model human being. He behaved how Allah wants every human being to be. He gave us that example. So it is hard to describe when Allah reveals Himself to somebody and gives you that happiness. You know, it's like heaven on earth. You, you cannot put it in words. It's a feeling that comes in and you feel like you're, you're flying, like you're, you're hovering. No, nothing else can, can, you know, can ruin your, you know, your mood. That's when Allah puts the happiness. And to achieve it, you have to do what you have to pay the price. And the price is knowledge, steadfastness, good deed. When you, are, when you do those, you achieve it. So this is the first, part, you know, the first verse. ibadi anni al ghafur rahim. Inform my servants that I am al ghafur and al rahim. The other part. If you decide not to go to Allah and you stray away, then the second verse applies. Then you are inviting Allah's painful punishment to bring you back. Allah is not vindictive. Allah punishes you when you go astray just like you punish your, your child when he goes astray because you love them. You want them to get back to the straight path. You want them to be the best that they can be. You don't punish them because you're mean. You punish them because you love them. So the second verse are for the ones who do not go to Allah willingly. You want to stray? Then get ready for Allah's medicine. Allah Taala has painful punishment to bring everyone back. And He controls every atom of your body. It doesn't take much to, make, to turn life into a living hell. One of the organs stop working or cancer, la samahallah, or something. Allah has many, has infinite medica medicines in his medicine cabinet. And they're 100% potent and they're always available. So don't, don't try Allah. Don't ask for punishment. Go to him willingly. Do not stray away and invite his punishment. That's what the second verse is for. Allah's punishment is the most severe to bring you back. So do not invite problems at work. Because you can have problems at work, problems in your body, problems in your family, problems in your marital life. There are so many problems that can happen in this, in this life. And Allah wants you, will use them 
based on his wisdom, to bring you back to the straight path if you are straying from his path. So in conclusion, the human soul was designed to be happy with closeness to Allah. There is no other formula. You want to be happy and safe? Then be with Allah. Be obedient to his orders. Be steadfast on his orders and do good deeds. It's not enough to say, Ya Allah, I love you. Or, you know, to express, I you know, have a you know, nice plaque in the house that, that has nice Quranic words. Those are meaningless. Not meaningless in themselves, but if that's the only thing that you have, they're meaningless. You have to manifest in action. It has, your, your knowledge and, and faith has to manifest itself in good action. So come closer to Allah and you see, you'll see wonders. You'll see wonders in this life and you'll see wonders in the hereafter. Come closer and you'll be purified of all of the ills of the soul. Come closer to Allah and you achieve happiness. In, in Surah Fussilat, chapter 41 and verse 11, when Allah Taala was creating the heavens and earth, the verse goes, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَهِيَ دُخَانٌ فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ اِتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهًا قَالَتَا أَتَيْنَ طَائِعِينَ Then he directed himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the heaven while it was smoke before creation was there. It was just smoke. And he said to it and to the earth, come, means be, come into existence. Come willingly or by compulsion. They said, we have come willingly. So here's your choices for the journey. Our journey on earth. You have two choices. You can do it the easy way, or you can do it the hard way. The universe was smart. They said, no, we don't want compulsion. We will come willingly. We will do what we're supposed to do Willingly, don't let the universe be smarter. Allah gave us the freedom of choice, but with that freedom of choice comes responsibility. Will you come willingly or will you let Allah drag you in chains to him? Because you will come to Allah. So you do it when you're safe, when you're happy, without, you know, easily. You can do it the easy way. So he can forgive your sins, purify your souls and make you happy. Or you can come to him after a painful punishment. How many people find religion, find Allah after a catastrophe? The examples are numerous. You have, you know, are you waiting for a loss of life? Lo- loss of children? Loss of wealth? Loss, I mean, what, what a sickness? What is it going to take before you go to Allah willingly? You say, and you say, Ya Allah... I intend to obey you willingly. I don't need to be punished. I don't need to, co- to be punished to come back to the straight path. I will do that willingly. So these are your options. But you will come to Allah. You can run to Allah or He can bring you to Him running. That's your option. So do it willingly and do it safely.